Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. Yeah, we're alive and we're safe. And we're shipwrecked. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> this is episode 154, recorded November 29th, 2021. Gruesome Magazine. I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic, not so classic, film from this groovy, wonderful, wondrous, gory, and influential decade. I've only done this for 154 times, and I screwed that up. All right, with me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I'm great. I'm great. I, I watched this twice last night. <laughs> yeah, but you watched two different versions, right? That's true. That's true. All That's right. true. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, we'll go, let's, let's go ahead and say we're doing Planet of Dinosaurs from 1977. So if you have any recollection of what that movie is, you know what we're in store for tonight. All right. Also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy. Bill, how are you doing, sir? Doing fine. I picked this movie. And why wouldn't I? It's a planet of uh, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> For my whole minutes. Yeah. Well, there, there, there's actually quite a few dinosaurs in this. That, that was impressive. Yeah. yeah. That's about it. Dinosaurs, right. dinosaurs and walking. That's pretty much it. Walking. Yeah, but no hobbits. Mm. All right. Join us tonight. It's Chad Hunt, comic artist and co-host of every single Decades of Horror podcast that we have. He's a busy man. Chad, how you doing? I am. Uh, I'm good. You are good. Unlike sir. this movie, yeah. You'd like this movie, yeah. Okay. Uh, unlike this movie, yeah. Oh, unlike, oh, oh. Unlike, oh, I misheard you. Oh, oh, okay. Wow. All right. What do, you mean, what do you mean, wow? Did you watch the same movie? I, <laughs> I did watch the same movie. There is okay. no wow. There is no wow. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's, what we're going to do is we're going to get into this. We're all going to reveal when we first saw this, and we'll talk about the film, and then we'll wrap things up with a little what, what. And then, uh, Jeff, you have some uh, listener feedback at the end of the show, correct? We do. All right. We stick do. around for that. So what is this? planet of dinosaur movie you're talking about all right or dinosaurs <laughs> directed by james k shea <laughs> written by uh, ralph lucas and jim operly is that how you guys pronounce that last name i think so good. very good i'm very guessing good. The cast yeah. cast include uh includes uh, louis lawless pamela B botaro charlotte spear and max thayer among others the release date was november 18th 1977 that was at the virgin islands film festival um uh, and i don't believe it actually made it to the united states until 1980 am i right i think i am oh my goodness the visual effects are done by doug beswick the chief stop motion animator jim opperly and stephen zerskus uh special visual effects and jim danforth was the Matt artist. That's a name you might be familiar with. Oh, Synops yes. Synopsis, a spaceship gets lost and is forced to make an emergency landing on an unknown planet. The planet looks very much like Earth, only with no trace of civilization. Soon the crew discover there are dinosaurs on the planet and bloodthirsty buggers at that. The crew hopes to be found and rescued, but they have to struggle to survive until then. With their yep, that's it. With their fancy spacesuits, as you can see. In the oh, yeah. Picture. And, and survive laser. each other. Yeah. Right, uh, right. Right, right. Um, there's, we, I, got, I just got to show the, <laughs> the That's an awesome poster. You can't because say anything bad about that poster. Up until this week, that was all I knew about Planet of the Dinosaurs was that poster. <laughs> it's got my, wow. on it. my, how things have changed in the past week. But we'll get to that. All right. Uh, let's, let's, let's talk about this. When? Did we first see this film? Um, let's start off with Bill Mulligan because this was your choice, sir. When, when did you see? Did you see this when it came out? And why is this your? Oh, I, I'm sure I did. I, I don't. I think it did play in some theaters, but very limited release. I saw pictures of it in some of the monster magazines, you know, and enough to see that the dinosaurs were stop motion. It's pretty obvious when you have a picture of a stop motion model because it's in perfect focus and the background isn't uh, when it's low budget. 
stop motion. I don't care. I love stop motion. Stop, there was a time when I would watch, and I still would watch any movie that has stop motion animation or is in 3D. Now, I got over the 3D thing because there's just so many of them, but stop motion is still the thing that got me into film. So it's, it's a first love and it's never gone away. I could tell it was low budget. I saw it. I think I eventually saw it late night TV. I may have even seen some, there were some movies made that um, stole or took or borrowed or bought the uh, special effects from this. But I, I think I may have seen this early on and it was pretty much what I expected it to be really low budget. Um, it kind of, kind of gave me a little bit of that. Um, uh, um, what's, what am I drawing a blank here? This movie um, Equinox. Kind of a little bit of that Equinox vibe mm -hmm. where it's clearly yeah. a bunch of people who got together and made a movie. Now, the guys who made Equinox did a better job in terms of the script and, and other things. But all the money in this went to the stop motion. And frankly, that was the right choice. It's the, That's the reason this existed. That's the reason they made it. And it's, it's pretty good stop motion. Low-budget stop motion is rare and rarely good. But I, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed it a lot. Now, the movie itself... It's a lot of walking. A lot of walking. A lot of climbing. A lot of walking from one scene to another. <laughs> and then every now and then they interrupt the walking with, hey, what's that? And we see some cool stop motion. And then they get back to walking. And counting There's guns and counting. Yeah. <laughs> and, every, and then every now and then they'll sit down and they'll have dialogue with each other. And you then you're watching these actors try to act. And you're like, ooh, let's get back to the walking. <sighs> yep. And they, they, they ferment alcohol pretty quickly somehow mm -hmm. but yeah we'll get, that. we'll get to that but, but you know what for all that this okay so i've always i've always said uh, equinox is the movie i would have liked to have made with my friends back when i was about that age and getting into super eight filmmaking and everything that's the movie i would imagine that i would have made planet of the dinosaurs is the movie i would have actually made nah. that's how it would have come out and yes. and so I appreciate the fact that these guys, you know, had that love for dinosaurs and stop motion and movies, and they went out and made it. Maybe their reach exceeded their grasp, but that's not a big sin in my book. So I, I have a certain amount of affection for this film. But I know where Chad's coming from, and I'm not going to disagree with anything he has to say. All right. Well, speaking of Chad, <laughs> Chad, sir, when did you first see Planet of the Dinosaurs, and what was your first impression? Yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 24 hours to go. Yesterday. Um, my first impression of this movie is I felt like, well, you know when you're watching a Hanna-Barbera cartoon, the characters are running and they're the same background passes them by? This, this, was, a, this was a stop motion animation uh, version of a Scooby-Doo short. There you go. Um <laughs> I kept expecting one of them to rip a mask off the dinosaur at the end, and the dinosaur, you know, yeah. how they got away with it. It <laughs> wasn't for your kids. Yeah. Um, this is a horrible movie. <laughs> Just horrible. I, I mean, horrible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't beat around the bush, Chad. No, there's. I'm not going to beat around the bush like they hit her around for 15 minutes of the movie. I'm not going to do that. The stop motion animation is perfect love it love the stop motion dinosaurs in in here and doug beswick i'm i'm a fan of his mm. anyway and jim danforth and i was like oh this yeah. is gonna be pretty good no 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 this is oh my god this is horrible but this, did you at least have fun sir uh, when the dinosaurs were on, okay. Well, but I, I'll do this. I I did watch the riff tracks version, yeah. Which if you're going, I'm going to go ahead and do my closing statement now. If you're going to watch it, watch it the riff tracks version. Did you sure. watch both versions? No, I watched <laughs> ten. I watched ten minutes of the the original version, and I was uh -huh. going, is there is there a riff tracks <laughs> version? Oh, <laughs> thank you. There is. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, it's. It's not a good, not a good movie, okay, but it's but it has some cool stuff. It did have some cool uh, stuff in it, as far as the dinosaurs were concerned. All right, well there you go, folks. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> sir, when did you first see Planet of Dinosaurs, and uh, what was your first impression? Last night, uh, and you know, again, I'm just going to say the same thing. 
great stop motion amazingly smooth i i thought it was really well done um but there was just way too much not dinosaurs <laughs> no, and, too much uh, not. and and the conversations they had as a group uh, you know between them they were having these heartfelt soulful conversations that were just nonsense you know at least yeah from my point of view um so anyway uh my apologies to whoever wrote the dialogue but uh wow just wow um and and the uniforms were just hilarious although i was i i love the laser rifle only because at at first i thought it was like uh, a row of plastic water bottles no uh, that's so cool <laughs> taped to something but it but it was a little more complex than that and you know it, yeah I don't know. There was just such dumb characters. The VP boss was such an idiot. And so I guess you got to throw those, you know, they landed on a planet. They don't know where they are. Well, let's go find some people and find a telephone. I know. That was hilarious. <laughs> That's the VP of the Spacely. I think, wasn't, yeah. it the, wasn't it the Spacely organization? Isn't that the Jetsons? It is. <laughs> so <laughs> ah, Spacely Space Rockets. Uh, oh so anyway, my god, that's hilarious! Um, yeah, so <laughs> I don't know. I'll I'll quit ramming up, but I too, I but I did watch the whole thing the whole way through, and I remember thinking, "Oh, they're walking again," and we're gonna watch them, <laughs> we're gonna watch them walk the entire way from point A to point B. There's no like cut in shots like I left and now I'm arriving. There's just yeah. And when Long we shots. see them all file, we see them all go by in single file. Uh, I think on the rift yeah. tracks, they said uh, something like, Here's oh, the cast now again. We're, now we're introduced to the cast one by one again. <laughs> so, and that's God, there was a lot of that. Um, and, and, and you I had the did, soundtrack too, the, the, the great, you know, Kevin with his synthesizer. Yes. Was obviously, yes. one guy, D, you know, wah, 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 like he's experimenting with the keys. Yeah, there was some interesting stuff on there. And and there was a couple of rock songs I thought it was going to break into, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but 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 I'll tell you what, the riff tracks is a lot of fun. It was I I thought that actually made it worthwhile. And I usually don't like dumping on a picture, but I, I felt like they were more saying funny stuff than they were like bashing. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Um, but anyway, okay, time to quit talking. <laughs> oh man we're gonna have, bill we're gonna have to make him watch laser blast soon uh, FIFA oh season. god yes um i i had never i i knew of this film uh but i never got to see it until this week i never really honestly i never really wanted to but i um yeah, i welcomed the opportunity to and i went in with uh uh, low expectations and those low expectations were met. I, um, it's, it is, it is a, yeah, it's very low budget and it wears that low budget on its sleeve. Uh, it does excel, I think, in the dinosaurs. To me, it's kind of cheesy and charming in a weird way. I didn't yeah. hate it. I didn't, I, I, I mean, I, it's, I still thought it was a bad movie, but. I kind of had fun with how bad it was. I had fun with, you know, the, the, the really awful costumes, the, you know, the, we got four guns. Whoops. Now we have three because I dropped it in the water. Well, that's a good laser gun. You drop it in the water. Yeah. And then one goes how off did, the cliff. Right? How does it handle space when he's dropping it in the water? Um, yeah, the other one goes off the cliff and shatters. Uh, but they weren't very useful guns anyway. No, they, they didn't work. Didn't even, even if you hit them, it just it just yeah, mildly they, pissed off the dinosaurs. So. They just looked at you. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It it actually is a fairly ambitious film. It has a, <laughs> a large cast. It's an ensemble piece. Uh, it just doesn't oh, yeah. amount to anything. But it um, you know, and it 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 really goes into characters and it goes into like conflicts between them i mean it, it doesn't it does what it needs to do to make a story but it's just oh my god he's trying so hard y'all 
But no, I'm not. I'm really. I mean, you're this, no, you're but I can tell you're struggling. <laughs> but it, it's it's kind of it's kind of awful. Um, <laughs> kind of awful. Kind of awful. And uh, but I'm, I'm serious. I even though I thought the movie was kind of garbage, I, I kind of I'm, I'm kind of more on Bill's side. I'm kind yeah, of like well, there this you is go. Actually, actually, kind hey, of love is and blind. And I haven't seen the riff track version yet. I'm, I'm, it's fun. It's it's actually fun. And yeah. and I agree with what Jeff said. They sometimes these riff things get a little cruel. And, and I I feel bad because I know the filmmakers are still alive. And uh, and and I know um, Mr. Apparel was not too thrilled at the prospect of being riff tracked by it. But I think I think there was a certain amount of affection in the riffing here. You know, there's there's no point in criticizing a movie that is so low budget. And when we say low budget, I mean I think it costs like a million dollars, but almost all that money went to the effects. So the amount that was left over for the walking scenes was pretty low. Now I'll say, all that being said, there's no excuse for some of the technical incompetence. This is a weird movie in that the, the effects are like super high quality, better than some Hollywood stuff. And then just scenes of people being shot day for night or shot in a way that their face is completely in shadow. You know, I think one of the facts that we have is that most of it was lit by reflectors. Okay, what? You couldn't find any lights? You couldn't? <laughs> well, it's also, also almost or entirely maybe a generator out, out in the middle. of Maybe. Mm. Well, it is almost entirely outdoors, right? And so there's sure. no, like, there's no, like, I mean, there's locations, but it's just like, okay, we'll shoot over there. We'll shoot over there. It's just kind of where, where it looks like wherever they found, they shot, right? Yeah. Which, I don't know. It. I was I was a little worried at first when, you know, the, the ship was in the lake and sinking because it was like, well, I see the influence here. Yeah, 20, <laughs> mil, 20 million planet, miles to Earth, yeah. Yeah, or was, Planet of the Apes, like but it just didn't, yeah. didn't quite come. But, you know, at the same time, they have this – Captain Lee guy, right? Who you know isn't confident of himself, and then you got the and shouldn't be. He has no right. reason to be. Well, that might be true, but it's you know he, he does have an arc, <laughs> as small as the arc is. And then you got what? What's the what's the the big muscle guy? What's his name? Bluto. Chuck. Bluto. That's not Bluto. It's not Chuck, is it? Chuck was the you guy, mean the guy, guy with his shirt. shirt off all the time. No, 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 no the no, big no, burly no, no. guy, the, Jim. The, the, Jim, the James Jim. Brolin Jim. guy. Jim. Yeah, Jim. Who was who was in uh, the Hills Have Eyes and is oh know. nice, nice. Yeah. So I, I mean, so you know, there was a con. I don't know. I was kind of like, well, I can see where they were heading with this. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. It could have been so much more if they'd yeah. had the money. Uh, like I like Bill's saying it, it, you can tell all the money went into the, into the stop motion and it looks, it looks great. Uh, even some of the kills with the humans is mm. just why I was like, wow. Um, yeah. Like the one that gets grabbed by the T-Rex and taken into the, yeah, yeah, into yeah. the cave. That was great stuff. Great, great stop motion. And, and unexpected. Cause I thought she'd be one of the ones that would live to the end, but, uh, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty loosey goosey with who gets killed. It's not necessarily yeah. the the characters you think are going to survive to the end that survive to the end. So if I cared about them, that would actually be uh, that kind of cool. But <laughs> and and you know we could talk about the low budget and everything. But listen, if if the script is bad, it doesn't cost money to write good dialogue. Um, maybe these weren't the it, best actors on earth, but I don't know that anyone could have really done a whole lot with what they were given here. There was some I was good gonna, ideas, I was gonna but say, it was awkward. I was going to say, it does take money to, to film more than one take, though. <laughs> I, got the, I get the impression there wasn't too many more takes than one. On some yeah, that may be. And they were shooting on film back then, so you couldn't just rewind it and shoot over. Oh, so. That's true. It's not you always got to keep that in mind. That Every shot, everything you shoot has got to be developed, and uh, it's going to cost money. So And there was definitely, definitely doing on tripods. So. And that is one of the nice things about stop motion. Every frame you shoot is going to be used. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to use a frame of stop motion footage, you don't bother shooting it. You know, it's like animation. There shouldn't be any outtakes. Mm -hmm. so. and, the, and the integration between the human characters and the dinosaurs was actually pretty good. There's one part where mm -hmm. the one guy has to like 
sneak around back behind him to get the gun that he dropped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and it, the it useless looked, gun. It, it actually, yeah, the useless gun that isn't going to do him any good anyway. But he looked pretty good. I thought, you know, that it, yeah, yeah, I think dodge they, dodge the tail at one point. Yeah, you know, he's, 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 Yeah, you see him through the legs of the. You know, he's not. Yeah, they did some good so uh, proje back stuff. projection or front projection. I'm not sure how they did, but there was some good integration. They did. I mean, they knew what they were doing. They have the Harryhausen technique, what they call sometimes dynorama or dynamation, where you pretty much make mats and you create a sandwich of the creature on the set with a good background. And then you take part of the background and put it in front. You usually can see the feet kind of blur into the ground at the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's a cool That's a cool thing. It looks good. Um, they had some good, nice matte paintings by Jim Danforth. Who, I mean, you, you don't get anything better than that. It's... I like these little labors of love. The problem with them, laser blast being another one, is that, man, the, the effects just are, they are the tail that wags the dog. There's so, mm, there's so little, mm -hmm. yeah, there's so little to frame these great effects. And uh, you just, you just wish they'd taken a little more time to take a crack at the script. And, but that wasn't the main goal, I guess. And yeah, it's it, not the reason why people, you know, went to go see it it's this is a movie i mean most of you guys saw this recently if you saw this as a kid it would probably hold a, a place in your heart yeah mm -hmm. i can imagine because that. yeah what kid wouldn't love planet of the dinosaurs just imagine it's you and your friends wandering around a planet of dinosaurs and... yeah. i mean that's like one thing in bc right yeah so mm -hmm. well i love some of the scenes i mean i love the scene where they crash and the, the, everybody's jumping out the oh the my god that was door. the porthole boy that was hilarious. I like we have no <laughs> idea how far up that that door is, but later when they show the ship, the closest opening you can see is oh. like hundred feet in the air, and they're just kind of yeah yeah they'd yeah, be just, bouncing off that like that guy on the propeller of Titanic. I mean that was a uh, the one woman uh, when she gets out, I think she trips. It's funny. Oh, that one does. Yeah, it looks like she fell. And, and the one guy takes his big metal case and throws it out with no concern of the fact that a bunch of people just jumped out ahead of him, probably conked him on the head. These are the, the red flag version. Each person that was going out, the one guy was helping him out, and he, and a couple of looked like a couple of times he got close to the to the rear end of a couple of people going out. Nah, he man. goes, "Oh, you've been doing squats. You've been working out." <laughs> <have you?" laughs> it was pretty. It was good. Yeah. Uh, the uh, and then the ending scene. I love that the uh, sort of the sort of the oh, yeah. epilogue. I yeah. guess uh, I just thought that was awesome. Yeah. All of a sudden, we cut to the little pleasant little family of well six now. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two women, uh, three guys. Don't ask any questions. One kid and a boy. You know, notice yeah. notice how yeah. Bluto's beard was all gray. So they shot that scene first because that's how his beard really looked. And then they shot the rest oh, really? of the movie, and he color yeah, he colored his beard. Oh, I didn't oh, know yeah. that. Oh, I that was so that. smart. Yeah, that was a good move. And that's a that's a Jim Danforth matte painting. I think I have a picture of him working on that, which is a real lost art. Matte paintings are the kind of thing that you don't see much anymore because it's just easier, I guess, to do it digitally. And yeah, there he yeah. goes. Yeah, that's the scene right there. That house and all that is just painted in. He was a master of that. He, you know able to get paint on a piece of glass and make it look like it blends into the background. Mm -hmm. We might, we tend to think of him as mostly stop motion. And I don't think he did any of the stop motion in this I mean, master at it, but his real art and I guess his real love and what he's done mostly is matte paintings and a lot of films more than people think about with him. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a good thing because nobody does stop motion much anymore. If yeah. that's your only trick, you're not going to have much of a career. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it didn't take off, did it? Uh, okay, we we showed these two. Um, yeah, I, you got to see the other poster. Well, we got to look at the other posters, right? That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Star with Wars, the, much? Yeah, with an X Wing. Uh, oh, my God, it is. X Wing and the Millennium oh, Falcon. Wow. And the Millennium Falcon, yeah. The Millennium wow. Falcon's right there. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, my God. Look Pure at that. balls, man. <laughs> look at that. Oh, my goodness. Wow, the, you know, copyright. I'm what? surprised what they didn't put Han Solo in one of his hands. Just, nah, no kidding. Maybe they did. Maybe that's him. I um yeah. <laughs> it, there's also the thing that you know most people call it Planet of the Dinosaurs. And yeah, they right. were saying that it was just because it was very sloppy marketing. But you know, people 
I don't know. I don't know the story behind that, but no, I like it better this way. It's not Planet of the Dinosaurs. It's Planet of Dinosaurs. It's a planet full of dinosaurs. Um, dinosaurs. Yeah, you're just visiting on the Planet of Dinosaurs. This this, this big goof here is uh, with his shirt off. Is just a tourist at Planet of Dinosaurs. <clears throat> I know he goes for a swim, but he never puts his shirt back on. Yeah. He's Why? traumatized by that girl Why? being eaten by the ichthyosaurus. Well, there, there was a lot of that too. You know, the the uh, the guy in the bottom, the Gabe Kaplan kind of lookalike. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that plays the man. VP of the company. Yeah. Uh, he ends up in the water too, and like thirty seconds later, he's sitting with everybody else, and he's completely dry. Now, yeah, oh, it could have right, been a time because... jump. Could have been a time jump, I guess. Uh, those white guy froes were pretty good at shedding water like a duck. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. There you go. I liked when the his his secretary quit. She she writes it on a rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that adapting, the, the guy with adapting to the environment, right? The guy with his shirt off is not much of an actor. I mean, like you say, I don't think there were a lot of takes because when he gets his this sil you know, they don't do many favors either because they shoot this in one shot. So he's got to do the entire monologue without and and you can see he's thinking of the lines i think that's the effect he was going for was deep and introspective but it really just seemed like what was my next line <laughs> yeah it doesn't flow real well when she that scene there where she's going to help them with the whatever it was the reflectors right like somehow mm -hmm. or another reflectors we're going to do some kind of signal reflecting or <laughs> or I, I don't know it did, yeah. anyway uh yeah it, takes them a while to remember to say no i don't need your help you go back yeah and they're just putting little pebbles down to keep it in place yeah there's no yeah way. yeah it's, it's ridiculous but it yeah it, <laughs> it's it works it's fine um but yeah, there's uh, the bottom, the bottom shot the bottom shot's so stupid so we know there's dinosaurs we've established we've seen at least four or five dinosaurs by now he finds a bunch of giant eggs on the sand and he's like Huh, must be from a really big chicken. Yeah, I guess that's a possibility. It's an interesting hypothesis here, but how about this? It's from a dinosaur, you fool. Oh, Who's probably going to be really pissed off when you see him playing with her eggs. And indeed she is. And she and is. Indeed she is. Yep. And it proves to be a bad move for him. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I, yes. I see your point. Yeah. Um, uh, he sees the point. <laughs> all right, all right <laughs> James Whitworth. Um, Papa so, Jupiter. Papa Jupiter. Yeah I, yeah, I did not realize that at all until you said that. But I, I kind of liked him. I thought he was. I mean, he, he's not really a good actor, but he was fine in this. At least he, he brought some conflict uh, to the whole thing. And you know what? He was right the whole time. I mean, that that fence that they were putting up was the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. Did, did it just fall over? I mean, of course, it fell over. <laughs> like the guy it absolutely the guy fell over. Like, I was like, yeah, what did they call oh. that? They were building a stockade. A stockade. A stockade. Yeah. Okay. In what universe is that a stockade? I wouldn't keep a toddler in there. <laughs> the universe of the dinosaurs. Yeah, these these guys weren't worried about the footprint they were going to leave behind them at all. On this now, luckily, in the end, the dinosaur just walks into it like he's Count Yorga, but it's it's not a good plan. That that stockade was, you know, with well, some rope different. that they just happened to have lying around. Rope. They're from the 29th century, but they keep rope around. Okay. Well, well yeah, they, 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 uh, yeah. I don't know where they got the stuff they were weaving the rope out of, but threads yeah. from the blankets. Or, the, or oh, I don't know the guy's shirt. Yeah, yeah. There you oh, go. there you <laughs> are. Yeah, they used the shirt. Yeah. He I mean. didn't need it. <laughs> All right, uh, Vasquez. There we rocks. go. So what? There we go. Oh, yes, that, so is, that, is that is that start? Star that's Trek? Captain Kirk versus a Gorn. Or it's a Redosaurus coming over. It's whatever you want it yeah. to be. You could have the Lone Ranger From, ride by it. Uh, 20,000 fathoms under the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Beast oh, from 20,000 wow. 20, fathoms. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they recreated the monster from the from Ray Harryhausen. And apparently Ray Harryhausen visited the set, which I would have just squeed to death if I had been working on a movie no, and good. he showed up. And he gave them his blessing. Like, what's he going to do? They've built the model already, and they're animating it. What's he going to say? No, no. He's Ray Harryhausen. He's like, you know, I mean, it's not like it's not like Ray Harryhausen saw this movie and thought, oh, these guys are competition. They're going to put me out of business. The one thing <laughs> these low budget, yeah, these low budget stop motion movies do illustrate one thing: 
there was only one Ray Harryhausen. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have him or, uh, or Jim Danforth or a handful of others, I mean, just a handful, mm -hmm. you might get some good animation like this, but you're not going to get that level of quality unless you put a lot of money into it. I mean, he really was a one man band, good at a lot of things and just elevated the movies that he was in. Um, this one had just the good animation, but, uh, I don't but think hey, I, that's cool. I, I don't think there's a lot of people that had the, uh, I don't know what the word is, persistence, tenacity, hmm. uh, to, to make these really oh. fairly long shots of stop motion. Because like in this one, they're both, hmm. they seem fairly short. I'm sure it took them forever to do each one of them. Oh, God, yeah. Um, yeah, and there's no more than two. When Hair hasn't did how many of the skeletons running around? Maybe seven. seven. Yeah, and it just felt like it was. Like, it's wow. No, I, I mean, they. I think he only got like three seconds a day done during the skeleton sequence. I mean, how you could keep all that track in your mind, even with a pencil and a piece of paper, I, I, I don't know. Um, he really was an amazing genius, and um, you know, it, it's it's why there aren't a lot of stop motion movies. They take a long time to make. And quite frankly, if you don't have a genius working on them, I've done some stop motion, some claymation stuff, and eh, no one was going to, I wasn't going to replace Harryhausen anytime soon. To be able to take these puppets and make them alive, it's, I, I think you almost have to be like a chess master to be able to think several yeah, moves uh, ahead. Yeah. And well, that's, you, you see, that's why Toho went to suit actors, right? Yeah, it's, it's oh, just yeah. so much easier. I mean, when you make an arm move, when you make a monster's arm move, you have to realize. You have to put a lot of thought into it. When when an arm moves, it doesn't just move at the, the same speed. It starts out slower, gets to a certain thing, and then slows down again. You've and got other parts all of the that, body move too, right? And that all means. the other parts of the body. You're just doing an arm, and everything else goes. His creatures really felt alive, yeah. you know. Uh, but I will say, I think the animation in this is pretty good because a lot of times, low budget stop motion is pretty flickery. Yeah, and this I think has a has a level of smoothness that that actually kind of surprised me. Pretty yeah, effective. The, the battle at the top there that we're looking at actually worked out pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Um, even though what the Stegosaurus was a little red, but hey, I'm good with that. Yeah, and, and the, the spider, spider, the spider, the spider, spider awesome. move really yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Now he only had like a, a second and a half of motion. I mean, yeah. they killed him pretty fast. And he was um, on top of a an actor too. So. Mm -hmm. Some good background. And thing that's there. not a I, Triceratops. What kind of a Styracosaurus? And I like the uh, Styracosaurus because it killed that annoying guy. But I will okay. say, when he's running, the legs seemed a little funny. The right. four-legged, four-legged dinosaurs. You know, it's it's hard to get that elephant-like gait without it yeah. looking kind of almost caterpillar-like and just so like a cat crossing a street or something is just you know straightforward. Mm -hmm. But yeah, these are all cool. The models are good. They're a little, a little bumpy skinned, for my taste. A little too, uh, yeah, the skin looks a little too fake to me. But this is just minor criticism from someone who's watched way too many stop motion movies. Mm -hmm. But that's a cool shot. I mean, get, getting to gore him and everything. I guess they matted that out. Um, to make it look like it's going in. That's a nice little mm -hmm. touch because it's it's almost an instantaneous scene, but it does register in your head that the horn actually mm -hmm. went into him. Yeah, it did. Instead of just cutting away at the last second. So, uh, you know, I appreciate that. There's a, They took some pride in their craft with this. They they were not half-assing the stop motion. Well, I, well I, they knew I that also, was the southern point, right? Mm -hmm. I also kind of yeah. liked how the, uh, the Tyrannosaurus made pretty short work of uh, the Stegosaurus and the, uh, I don't know how you pronounce the other one from. Retosaurus. Uh, yeah. Beast. Yeah. Um, he just, that that one in the middle, he, he just walks up to him and grabs him by the head and drags him off. That's that's all yeah. she wrote, you know? Mm -hmm. And then this, the same thing with the Stegosaurus. He, they fight around a little bit. He's he's biting his uh, bony plates on his back and then Always he just mistake. grabs his head and twists it, you know? And, oh. And that's it. That's all wrote. Yeah. <laughs> And the the little the little Allosaurus or whatever it is, he gets taken out pretty fast too. the The battles are pretty brief, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. right? 
right. And I understand that because those are probably hard to uh, hard to really choreograph because now you got two creatures to keep track of. It's going to take a while. But you know, you're right. I mean, the fact that the the fights were so brief really made the Tyrannosaurus look like a threat. I mean, how are these goofs going to be able to stop him when he's taken out dangerous dinosaurs with just a bite or two? Mm -hmm. And I like the scene, the one down at the bottom there, where you know he, he takes the girl and then yeah. her into. But looking at it here, it looks like he's got Gumby a little bit. <laughs> nah. it's, it's a little rubbery, but it didn't it didn't come across that way moving. So yeah, I bet if you blew it up, were able to blow it up, you'd see a lot of detail in that little that little figure. Yeah, she's got yeah, she's got the bell bottoms on and everything. Mm. Yeah. Nice little cave. There's there's an actual. So someone asked uh, on one of the forums, you know, are they? Do you still have uh, any of the models? Stop motion models do not last long. Foam rubber coated with latex disintegrates if they're not kept in amazing condition. I guess some of the Harryhausen models have been pretty well preserved or renovated, but for the most part, whenever you find these things, they just look like they've been through hell. Mm -hmm. Which is so too bad. Like head. Just the head there. Is that a yeah. shot of him animating it on a? I believe that is Mr. Um, if it's pronounced Zerkus. Um, I think that might be him, or I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's some behind the scenes footage there. Nicely done. I mean, they're they're well blended in there. There's the uh, there's the Ichthyosaurus, which was so fast. I mean, it's that's a cool looking model or Mosasaur. I don't know what he's supposed to be, but uh, that's it's so fast in the. Right? Yeah, it's so fast in the movie, you couldn't really tell what was going on. And I think they did it fast because, if I understand right, the actress who is killed in this scene was not the actress who they had available on the day that she got killed. So, you know, <laughs> she strips to her skivvies, jumps in the water, and then the next time we see her, it's a stand-in being dragged underneath, so they had to make it a quick shot. But that's too bad because he's a cool looking model and none of that showed up for very long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that shot at the bottom actually looks pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. The blood and everything. All I, all I saw was the little. Yeah. That came We're, into the water. No, didn't then, see much of the face. And then the water <laughs> bubbled. No, yeah. yeah. And uh, all right. So let's talk about some fashion here. Oh, my. Yeah. So what is this? Uh, uh, like somebody, they got these from the Goodwill at Logan's Run. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody designed well, this. a guy on uh, Riff Track says, "Why do you have an arrow pointing to your junk?" <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of hypnotic, you know. Uh, um, it is. Yeah, it looks, I always, it looks like a not 1970s really sure why they have two suit. different types of uniforms either. They have well, two they different uniforms, and then the women are just wearing whatever the hell they felt like wearing. Well, okay, so I did catch that. The the yellow and the brown ones are the officers, and the blue ones and the other ones are, you know, the enlisted you know, men. Yeah, there's just no red shirts. But uh, the one <laughs> that is just wearing regular clothes, they're actually civilians. Remember, because they were like complaining about civilians being on the ship. Mm -hmm. Why did you bring a civilian? Because he brought his secretary. And then he was uh, like, so. So they actually explained that, but it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. I do, oh, I, mean, I do appreciate the one thing about this movie. In in the first five minutes, we establish that it's a spaceship and the nuclear reactor is about to explode. And then it does explode and they end up on the planet of the dinosaurs. So they didn't dick around getting the movie's right. premise going. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they immediately start crashing with, let's go walking through a swamp forever. But, uh, but you know, in the beginning, it's nice and quick. It's, it's just, yeah. And, and don't they end up back at the same freaking lake at the end of the movie? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, now they, now they showed those dinosaurs who was boss. They didn't fear anyone. They, they didn't learned. need to put up they any learned. stock. Those. They learned just like they wolves. Like the wolves. He learned them. Yeah. He said he was going to learn them, and he learned them. And they don't this, learn it, them. This seemed a little uh, Planet of the Apish, too, to me. Oh, in that in that respect, yeah. But it seems so no. silly. It's like I'm going to walk away from the water and the vegetation into the desert. A plateau and, and live yeah. on a rock. What? What? Why were you thinking? <laughs> Don't get it. And he was the telling them there's food up, here. up there. He was telling them there's food and all this kind yeah, of. Why, stuff. Well, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Was there's shit up there? <laughs> <It's> more rocks. <laughs> plateau. These rocks are edible. And, um, and, the, and the dinosaurs you said couldn't get there got there. 
they got there anyway. <laughs> well, that was that was the food. Turns out they were the food he was talking yeah. about. Um, it was it yeah. make sense. <laughs> no, it didn't make a lot of sense. A lot of it didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, all right, uh, so let's go ahead and wrap this up because I think it's fair to say to watch this movie is to watch it for the dinosaurs, right? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I guess that's fair. Yeah, excellent dinosaur uh, stop motion. If all you're right. a fan of that stuff, yeah, great. If that's, that's great. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's that kind of and thing. if, and uh, if you yeah. want some deep conversations about the dilemmas involved with building a new civilization. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, there. I, I felt bad for him in a way. Yeah. I felt bad for him when this. Yeah, I, they, they just look like you guys are so screwed. You are yeah. not going to make it. <laughs> I just want to point out that Captain, Captain, I'm in charge here is wrong about everything. And Bluto, who we're kind of, we're sort of trained to not yeah. like this guy because he's big and lumpy and looks like he's a lot of trouble and he second guesses the captain. He's right. He's 100% right. Every idea the captain has gets someone killed. But well, so does, so does Jim. When, when the, when the captain out. finally <laughs> comes around, it's like the captain comes back at one point and says, they said, where were you? Uh, I was off trying to get him, give him some exercise or wear him out a little bit or run him a little bit or I, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, Jim is like, his buddy. Well, you tell us yeah. what to do. We'll follow you. You know. That's right. Now that you've gone yeah. out and, and eliminated the element of surprise, I'm on your side. Yeah, it didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> didn't make any sense. All right, Bill. Uh, give us a reason mm -hmm. why we everybody should watch this movie. Do it. Five, four. Three. Uh, it's got a, it's a planet and it's full of dinosaurs and the dinosaurs are stop motion animation. And Ding. and it will inspire you. It may inspire you as I think it has inspired many people who saw this at a young age that you too can make a movie with a bunch of dinosaurs. And uh, you know what? You can maybe even improve on, on this inspiration by also including some snappy dialogue and some good characters and everything. This, this is one of those movies that honestly to me makes, and I, I don't mean this in the snarky way that eh, if they can make a movie like a piece of crap like this, I can make it. This, this is the kind of movie that does um, open ideas in your head and make you dream about doing stuff like that these this is the kind of movie that got me into movie making not the big budget stuff if i looked at that i'd just be like i'm never going to be able to do anything like that i'm just going to sit back and eat my popcorn and wait for the next one it's the little films that where a bunch of people got together and went out and did the best they could with what they had that makes it think like i can do the best i can with what i got and and hope that uh the stuff i do will help inspire someone else maybe down the line and Maybe one of those people will turn out to be one of those Spielberg types who uh, takes it way further than most regular folks ever could. So, I mean, I've got a lot of affection for something like this. But, yes, look, if you're looking for a great movie to impress your friends and everything, might not be this one. Yeah, you got to be in the right frame of mind. Alcohol <laughs> helps. Alcohol helps. Oh, if you're in Nevada. Rift tracks, rift tracks, and alcohol <laughs> makes this one of the best enjoyment movies you're ever going to have. Oh, no. Chad, sir. I don't think there's an argument that you're going to give us to watch this movie. What? What? Give us your final thoughts. Right? No, well, no, I, there is an argument, and it's been brought up. We've brought it up a billion times. It's it's the dinosaurs. And, it, and Bill was right when he said if this was something that we had watched as kids, we might have a different outlook look on it. Because mm -hmm. it's got that, it sounds like it sounds like something you'd play in the backyard. It, it kind of does. I mean? yes. when, you're, when, yes. you, when you're when you're a kid, um, so, you throw yeah. a blanket on one of the kids and he's a T Rex lurching right. around. You can't exactly. see with his little hands out. That's that's kind of what I got from from this the the movie. I just uh, the problem is I watched it yesterday. You know, <laughs> yeah, not 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 when you're but, young. Uh, yeah, yeah, but. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nostalgia only goes so far in 24 hours. You really can if you got a good fast forward <laughs> finger like I do. Then you can get to the dinosaur parts as fast as you can. But that's all that's all gold right there. Every, every bit of the dinosaur stuff is gold. It's just it was tough getting through the other parts. <laughs> it was kind of slow. But but I don't see that as an argument for you not to watch to watch this movie. Uh you know, even though I didn't care for a lot of a lot of it, 
I would still, if somebody said, name a good stop motion dinosaur movie. Hey, this, here's one. That's just that's what I feel like anyway. I mean, just the dinosaur parts now. Just, just the, the dinosaur. Yeah, watch watch the sixteen minute cat <laughs> hunt cut of just the dinosaurs. That's the one you need to watch. There may be one on YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> Chancellor, what is your uh, final thoughts? What do you have? recommend it? Pass on. Well, there. Yeah, no, they're. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, check it out. I, the stop motion is cool. Uh, the Rift Tracks is fun, and I'll tell you, I, I'm not a big fan of, uh, I'll probably get some letters for this, but I'm not a big fan of Mystery Science Theater, um, or I'm gonna write, I've, I've, I've watched very, let me start watched, my letter to you. Yeah, yeah. I've watched very few, Dear Jeff. <laughs> very few of it, either one of those, Rift Tracks or that, but this one I just had to, I had to check out, and, and I thought it was, uh, they were funny. <laughs> but this has i don't know you know i'm looking at it and going these guys it, it kind of the guys all look like uh porn stars porn stars yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. um mm, the hair and the mustaches and, and the and the yeah, so anyway very um, 70s yeah the, very 70s yeah so anyway it, yeah go ahead and check it out it it's interesting that, that probably the hardest thing to watch. I mean, the the the, the dialogue in that is is not good, but the hardest thing to watch is all the walking, all the walking. I mean, they're just going from point A to point B, and nobody, nothing happens on the way. You're watching and going, you're going. Maybe a dinosaur. A dinosaur's gonna. <laughs> nope. 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 Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Um, I will say this. I, I, like I said, I thought it was, it has, it has its own charms. It's nostalgic mm -hmm. charm. Like you said, um, it it's, I think it's the, there's a little bit of earnesty to it. Is that a good way to put Earnestness? it? You know, the, yeah, yeah. Maybe that, I mean, they, I mean, they're, they're doing the job, right. They're making the effort. It just, you know, it's just not coming. Together. Right, right, right. Um, you know, it's not, it, it doesn't, it's not offensive, I guess. It's not campy. Think. Yeah. Um, yeah, it kind of is, but not it's not deliberately campy anyway. Yeah. Um, but it is charming. It's, it is an awful movie, but I enjoyed the hell out of it. <laughs> um, and I do think it's because it's, I mean, it's, just, it's just a side of like Ed Wood, right. You know, in a, in a way, I mean, it's not, that far but it's just you know it's it's heading that way yeah, it's yeah. it's going you know one slip well, the stop motion over. pulls that out of that it, but, you know you're right yeah. you're right um you know, ed, I, you know ed wood did make a dinosaur movie i don't want to know he, he wrote I, a dinosaur movie called <laughs> one million acdc and the dinosaur oh, was played right, by a hand right. puppet so yeah oh dear i oh, dear. i will say that i like these dinosaurs better and i like you know the rubber monster dinosaurs that we get in some of the films oh, yeah. um I mean, I'm not talking about Godzilla because Godzilla is a different thing, right? There's the man in suit, if you mm -hmm. will, is a lot of fun. But I'm not a, I'm not a really big fan of, of the, what was the Doug McClure movies that he did, you know, with the Land Rebel of Monster Time for Plan. God. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's there's something interesting about those because of the cast. But you know, I I never really liked those rubbery dinosaurs. Like you'd see their heads come in and they go, blah, 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 right? <laughs> um, and, yeah. and and there, and there's a couple of them that are low budget like this there's one where these kids take a raft down a river and they go oh like, journey to the beginning of time is that what it is yeah and i remember Del seeing that <laughs> deliverance too i remember seeing <laughs> i remember seeing that in the theater and i was just like oh God. um so you know it's an improvement in that respect but yeah this movie i yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's it's out there watch it it's it's, it's harmless it won't kill and, you. No. Right. Hey, can I say one thing? Um, Jim, I, I don't know if we're pronouncing his name right. Uh, Jim or Pearl uh, has been pretty active on some of the um, classic movie forums. No, really? Speaking to people. There's, yeah, the, it's there's like, it went on for pages and pages. So many people remember this film. And he's a real chill guy. This, this movie's been shown a few times in theaters and everything now, sort of uh, revived. And... Um, so it's it's good that uh, unfortunately a lot of the other folks that worked on this are no longer with us. Um, 
which is too bad. But I'm glad to see that he at least has seen that uh, it does have a certain amount of affection in people's people's memories, which is good to well, see. I saw, I saw something where uh, uh, at some place they like had a, a a band wrote a whole new soundtrack. Oh and then wow! They had radio actors dub the oh nice the dialogue and everything and had a big had a theater showing of it it sounded oh, actually, wow sounded oh my God, I, cool. I want to see that <laughs> i want to see that oh man all right well uh, i guess what we're trying to say leave your thoughts in the comments down below we want to know what you think <laughs> of this movie uh we and speaking of that jeff we have some feedback from previous we episodes do. is that right uh we do um i do have one comment i want to make first about last episode's movie frenzy Yes, that we left out a really key piece of information. John Finch, the lead actor, was originally cast for Alien. Was he? Oh, that's he right. Got, he what got he sick play? and ended up in the hospital the first day of filming. So they he was going to be the guy uh, with the chest burster, Kane. right? Yeah, he. Yeah. Oh my John God! Hurt. Really? John Hurt. Yep. Oh wow! Oh, wow. I, I forgot. All, I don't know why I didn't mention that then. I, I hmm. but anyway. Uh, all right, we have some feedback, and this is great. Yeah. This, this is excellent stuff, fun stuff. So uh, first is uh, Jeff Larimore, who I think is a Patreon, I believe. Yep, Patreon, he is. He's been patron. a long-time fan. Uh, yeah. Congrats on DOH70's on 150th. Sorry I'm late writing this, and I know it's been too long. But I wanted to say thanks and congratulations on the 150th episode or 150 episode milestone. Truly something to celebrate. To me, the 70s show is the flagship of a stellar, gruesome roster and hands down is the one I never miss. Nice. A big, big thanks to Doc, Bill, Chad and Jeff for keeping the smart, informed and simultaneously funny tone. They got me into the h &R orbit in the first place. Each of you brings something uniquely different to each episode that is greatly appreciated to this longtime listener. Cheers, and here's to another 150. Yes. Wow. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff. Thank you. That's awesome. Appreciate it, Jeff. Yeah. And it's good to hear from you again. Thanks for being such a longtime listener, too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So this one is a really, really long one, but it's like he bears his soul. So maybe we can comment as we go from Wesley Delorio. First, congratulations on your 150th episode of Decades Before the 1970s. I was hoping that my favorite horror movie, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, would be the milestone episode, but <laughs> all of the nominees were worthy of such an honor. Now, on to the point of this feedback. While this is not the best podcast on horror movies or any topic. It is my favorite. Let me explain. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I'm okay with that. I, I, that's how I feel about a lot of movies, yeah. <laughs> I, am, I am 44 years old and a lifelong fan of all things horror. Like most of us in the community, as a very young child, I was indoctrinated with movies such as Godzilla, King Kong, and the classic yes, Universal yes, Monster yes, Flicks. Yes, yes. Yeah. I loved... Anything that had to do with horror, whether it was on TV or books from my local library. No one else in the family shared this weird obsession. Like the narrator in Edgar Allan Poe's poem titled Alone, when others saw puffy clouds, I saw strange, curious, demonic shapes. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you best keep that to of, yourself, though. Yeah, I had, I had lots of friends and other interests, but none held my attention like horror. Like Poe, all that I loved, I loved alone. Growing up in the 80s, I was fortunate to experience a perfect storm for horror movies. New theatrical releases were pushing the envelope of practical effects while the home video market was reintroducing audiences to much-loved films that prior were either re relegated to late-night TV or a few nights in your town's theater, if you were lucky enough to catch them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what it was like in Iowa. Then there was the Forgotten Gems you vaguely remember seeing once on TV, but will never rerun. We're never rerun. Finally, there was the real price, the one you only heard about from friends at schools 
or your yes. older siblings or read about in the fan scenes. Wandering the horror aisles of the local video store, which is not a chain, <laughs> allowed me to explore this forbidden world for those elusive treasures. While my parents browsed the other sections for what they considered more appropriate content, I devoured the covers and plot summaries of every single box. Although the current streaming apps give the horror fan a lifetime of viewing at the touch of a button, there still is nothing like the tactile experience of holding those large, puffy VHS boxes with the images of blood and gore and villains and victims <laughs> that advertise unimaginable nightmares. He's right. Uh, 100%. No, so much. This is like my childhood, except for the part about having lots of friends. So, <laughs> After... After many trips to the video rental store, I noticed that I wasn't the only kid spending hours in the horror section. Yes, there were others. Unlike Poe, I wasn't alone. Throughout my school years, I sought out the other kids who had the same obsession, slowly building a community. If I couldn't nice. find anyone to share my obsession, I created them. Like Dr. Frankenstein, I took a part from this book, a scene from that movie, and built others to be my horror-loving creations, one piece at a time. Sometimes I would go too far, like Frankenstein and his many family members in all the sequels. And my creatures would shout, why are we watching this? <laughs> Before <laughs> breaking their chains and going into the next room, either too scared or too grossed out to continue. Fast forward to 2017. I had just begun checking out the world of podcasting when I came across DOH. I don't even remember how I became aware of it. One day, it mysteriously appeared in my downloads. Episode number 45, Let's Scare Jessica to Death, one of my favorites, mm -hmm. and yes. an overlooked and oft-forgotten film. So I was intrigued. I was hooked after one episode. The host, including the beloved Black Saint, not yes. only loved the genre and the decade, but had clearly spent their lives absorbing all things horror and made their personal conversations interesting to an audience. Other podcasts I listened to on the same subject were simply two or more people talking about horror movies. This podcast became the benchmark to which no others could compare. Wow. Nice. Wow. So why Thank would you. someone who obsessively loves horror and considers the 1970s to be the best decade for horror movies think this is not the best yes. podcast? Well, it doesn't have the biggest budget, A-list celebrity no hosts or guests, <laughs> polished scripts, or highly produced sound and scores. So in that respect, it is not the best podcast. However, think about the movies of the 1970s. With the few exceptions of the major studio blockbusters like Jaws and The Exorcist, it's the raw, grainy, low-budget, yet highly creative films that best define the decade. When the writers and directors were just getting started, yet so far ahead of their time. When the films were defining the genre for years to come. When the people who made great films gathered a small group of like-minded friends and created something magical. Those were the horror films of the 1970s. Early works of Spielberg, Craven, Carpenter, Romero, Argento, Landis, Dante, Hooper, Scott, De Palma. Was it their best work? Debatable. Was it my favorite work? Definitely. It mm -hmm. is my favorite era, and decades before the 1970s is my favorite podcast. I might not hear an interview with John Carpenter underscored with dramatic original music, but I will hear the raw, grainy, honest discourse of a few people who, like me, live and breathe horror movies. I am not alone. There are others who, like Poe, observe the passing clouds and sky and do not see white and blue. They see a demon in their view. Thank you for all the countless hours of listening to DOH 1970s, 80s, 90s, and the classic era. I appreciate the balance of positive and negative reviews, fun and facts, and even the occasional stray into unrelated topics. <laughs> all... That happens to me. <laughs> okay. Occasional. <laughs> occasional. Uh, all of the Kogos are truly entertaining, ed educational, and why I keep coming for every download. Each of you bring a different personality and voice to the podcast. While I do very much enjoy listening to all the DOH podcasts, the 1970s cast provides the best mix of facts, humor, insight, and criticism. It is my favorite podcast and the one I get the most excited about when it appears ever so mysteriously in my downloads. <laughs> Wes Delorio. Wow. 
That's that awesome. Awesome. That, that was really yeah, We're awesome. still not sure how that happened. So it's just kind of, yeah. 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 That, that's all, that was really well written too. That I mean, was, boy, that was, that, it was, it was. Yeah. 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 Usually yeah. we just get, you guys suck. So yeah, you know, so interestingly good. enough, that's kind of the way I found H and R. You know, I was discovered the world podcast. Although it was a little earlier, I think it was like 2015, maybe. But uh, um, boom, I don't know. Horror news radio came up, and I listened to it, and I was, I was like, this is what I'm looking for. This is entertaining and informational so i'm i feel really lucky and blessed to be a part of this as well i feel lucky that you're a part of it <laughs> yeah. well, a free, free cheers <laughs> to uh the black saint too for yeah oh yeah uh, yeah that was that was one thing that the black saint and i wanted to do is talk about the 70s because we both shared that love for the yeah. 70s and yeah. birth all this decades of horror stuff and yeah, I you. What was it, Carrie? Carrie, I yeah. think I think you knew I was a Stephen King fan, and you asked me on for Carrie. I I, I don't know why you asked me on. Because you and asked if what, you could be on. <laughs> that was Motel Hell. That was oh, Motel wasn't Hell. Okay. Was, uh, <laughs> and then and then uh, at the end of the show, you said, uh, "Oh, well, maybe we should have you back." You know, you were talking about what to do next, and you decided on deranged. Mm. Do you want to join us for that one, Jeff? I will join you for all of them until you kick uh, me off. As and he has left saying it. something. <laughs> look, what, look what you did. And look Sweet. what you created. No oh, man. Well, I, I met Bill on the set of a film. Which one? Uh, oh gosh, it was Christine's film. So, oh yeah, of course it was. Was we, it Fixed in Post? post? Or was fixed it? in Post, yeah. Because I was. Post. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. I, that, I was. I was one of the. Uh, which I, I regular, own a copy of that. Extras. Oh wow, yeah. I I feel, I feel like I've known you longer than that, but I guess that was it. And uh, mm -hmm. and was it was the Manitou the first one I was on? Yes, probably. probably. Oh god, that and I, that's still that will still be one of my favorites. I mean, oh, god. god, we had so much fun listening to that one. I'll listen to that every time I do. On a, I'll go on a long drive because um, mm -hmm. it well, was just so much fun. And and uh, uh, yeah. Santos just loved that film so much, but we had so much fun with it, you know. Um, and it's been great ever since. I mean, I can't, I uh, can't even imagine not doing this. Yeah, I miss uh, his stories about yeah being in New York and going to the CD theaters. Forty Second Street. And yeah, yeah, and Chad, you and I met at one of the film uh, at uh, Mad Monster Party for the first time, right? Mad Monster Party. Yeah, I was uh, met. I met you, Black Saint. I think Chris Moore was there. And Vixen. Mm. Vixen. And Vixen was there at the time. Mm. And uh, I was very excited because I was a big fan of yeah. the show from listening to it all the time. Yeah, you came <laughs> in on out, out, out with us for a good portion of the weekend. So it was a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just went from there. And I think you had me on for it was it, it was a superhero film. It had to be. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Man of Steel or one of those. <laughs> but, but one of those. But uh, yeah, and yeah, I, I love it here. Well, I sometimes wonder where I get my uh, testosterone from, I think, or something, the, the balls to. Because you let me on the 70s, and within like six weeks, I'm going, why don't you do uh, the, the golden era, a golden age of horror, you and Dave did a couple podcasts. And mm -hmm. you just said, we don't, we don't have time. So then I, I I texted or talked to Chad. I don't remember how we connected, but I he said, was standing wanna... in the bathroom at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I that was, was busy and he video was just phone trying, call. Kept trying to I talk know. to him. I don't know. It's, uh, but anyway, yeah, it just, just came together. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I said, "You want to do a a golden age of horror?" You know, and if you if you go with me, we'll go to Doc see what he says. So we suggested. I think we suggested uh, decades of horror the '60s. And then we got uh, Joseph Perry and at the time Aaron Miskell together and said uh, we had a meeting to talk about it. And, uh, you know, we said, screw it. Let's let's do classic here. Well, let's do all the decades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if he doesn't like it, it's easier to get forgiveness and permission or something like that. <laughs> so uh, that's that was that. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, what, what a great show that is. Kind now I got dragged guys. along on three. I know, three, now you're on all yeah. of them. <laughs> Apparently, you're a girl who just can't say no. <laughs> that's what that was in my high school yearbook. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's <laughs> do we do we have any more feedback, sir? We we don't. Not that I pulled up. We'll we'll okay. save a couple for next time. Yeah, we we did get some, um, and it, it just came a little. If you want, I could go ahead and read that. Uh, no, nah, no, we'll do it next week. We get we got to okay. end this up because um, we we got back to back podcast to record. If those who want to know, um, <laughs> uh, we, but there you go. Uh, do we know, sir, what our next film is going to be? We do, Mister Hunt. Film. Let's pick another Mario Bava. Uh, what? Baron, Baron Blood. Blood. Oh my God, Baron Blood. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yay. That's oh, that's a strange one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't. I, didn't I don't care. It Mario Baba for a long time. Yep, yep. Well, that'll be interesting. That, uh, Bill, Bill's happy. Yeah. Mm. What were you gonna say, Jeff? I was gonna say Bill got us out of the 1972 string here. Uh, we had uh, Dracula AD, 1972 72. Frenzy, 1972. <laughs> Then Planet of the Dinosaurs, 1977, or whenever later, uh, and now Bear and Blood, 1972. Back to 72. 72 was a uh, fat year. 72 yeah. was a good year, yeah. yeah. It's weird because it was that transition year, you know, from yeah. 72 and 73. Yeah. But uh, that's what we're here to talk about. All right, guys. Jeff, Chad, Bill, thank you for joining me. This was, as always, a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Show was. Yeah. Yep. Always. Love you guys. And thanks to <laughs> Jeff you. and Wesley. I really appreciate those. Yeah, thank that you. was awesome. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank nice. you. All right, let's say good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.